Sometimes I don't know how I'm feeling. Sometimes I feel a certain way, but I don't know how to express that feeling. If you experience this, keep on watching because we're going to be talking about alexithymia. Well hello indie people and if you're brand new to the channel I make weekly content about being autistic from my experiences so if that sounds interesting to you make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos like this. And if you find the information in this video useful make sure you share it with a friend because alexithymia is not exclusive to autism. But what exactly is alexithymia anyway? Alexithymia, also known in Greek as no word for emotions, people sometimes say is emotional blindness is not a diagnosis or an illness. It's a personality construct. It's estimated that 10% of the general public experiences some aspects of alexithymia. And for people who have elements of alexithymia, they have difficulty labeling their own emotions, identifying emotions in themselves and other people, but also understanding the difference between emotions and the sensations that come from an emotional response. Now later on in this video I am going to be sharing some tips on how to help someone who has elements of alexithymia, but I want to talk about my own personal understandings of this topic and how I feel about alexithymia and whether I could have elements of alexithymia. From looking at from my own perspective, for myself as an autistic person, I feel like I could have aspects to alexithymia. But this is not me saying that I do have alexithymia, this is just what I personally feel. This is just how I'm personally thinking going into this topic. Often in situations that I personally face on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not sure how to feel about certain things and I'm not instantaneously sure how I'm supposed to feel. Because when you're in certain situations there's obviously certain emotions, certain feelings that you have with set situations. And often when I'm faced with a situation instead of being quite emotional about it, I tend to think a little bit more literally and a little bit more analytically which is the main thing with alexithymia. People come across as if they are not as emotional as other people because for me I have to really think about what I'm actually experiencing because it just doesn't come to me instantly and that's okay you know we're not all emotional mavericks. Also earlier on in the video you might have heard me say that people with alexithymia have difficulty labeling the emotion that they are feeling which this is something that I have had trouble with all of my life. It's not something new that has just spontaneously come about since researching this topic. It is something that I generally have difficulty with. Sometimes I just don't know how to feel. I'm feeling one, two, three different feelings at that moment. I'm not sure whether it's anger, embarrassment, or I feel very vulnerable. And sometimes in that situation when I'm feeling two, three different types of feelings, different types of emotions, it's just really difficult to trying to personify those feelings and understand what is actually going on in my head. So we've talked about what alexithymia is, how I personally feel about it from my own experiences. Now we're going to go on to tips, how to help someone who has aspects of alexithymia. So really the first tip is understanding alexithymia, like understanding what alexithymia is in the general scheme of things. So for example, videos like this, blog posts, just anything that gives you a general understanding of alexithymia can greatly help those who experience it. But also just by sharing content about alexithymia, it might get people thinking about their own emotions and things, which is obviously a good thing and broadens people's minds and helps them understand alexithymia as well. But the next tip for helping someone who experiences alexithymia is be understanding. When it comes to dealing with people who experience alexithymia, it's just about being understanding. And this is not just with alexithymia, it's autism as well. Just being understanding about people's needs and understanding that can greatly bring better acceptance to people, if that makes sense. So it's just about understanding the person that you have in front of you, you know, and just helping them through that. Next tip, avoid dishonesty. If someone with alexithymia struggles to recognize their own emotions or the emotions of other people, they may heavily rely on someone who is more emotionally in tune with themselves and other people 
to bounce from or to get an understanding of what's happening emotionally. So for example, if you say to someone who is autistic and experiences elements of alexithymia, leave me alone, and you actually want them to stay, the person you're telling that to might actually take it as she does not or he doesn't want me to be around her right now so I'm just going to leave when you obviously want them to stay. So I think being honest with your emotions and what you're wanting from the other person I think is incredibly important. And then another tip, tell the person who experiences alexithymia how you feel and what you want from them particularly if it's a romantic situation that you are involved in but this could work in any other situation i guess quite often i'm useless i'm utterly useless when situations are quite awkward or if nicola's upset and i don't know what to do i have to obviously ask her what she needs me to do or what she would like me to do sometimes i just don't know what to do i'm just kind of stood there looking gormless and just putting my hands up just being like I don't know what to do. So I think having that conversation with your other half or whatever the situation is, having that discussion I think just helps the situation and helps the person as well. Next tip, learn to recognise the signs of alexithymia for yourself but also check in with yourself. Because for me, sometimes I'll just get overwhelmed and I don't know what the heck I'm experiencing and it's just all boo! So it's good just take it a few minutes to myself alone and just figure it out what I'm actually experiencing and how to correct the issue, which I think obviously the analytical mindset that I do have on occasions can help with that and also if I know what the signs are then I can help myself and try to do something but also if you're someone who doesn't understand the emotion that you are feeling there is actually a thing called an emotional color wheel which was on Yo Samdi Sam's video about alexithymia which is one of the links one of the resources down below I think something like an emotional color wheel so you can work back from that first emotion that you're experiencing can just really help you check in with yourself and just help yourself going forward. Also if you can reduce sensory input because you might experience a headache when you're in an office environment for example but it actually might be because you're tense or you're stressed but because of the situation that you're in so you've got like blinding lights or you know you're working on a laptop screen and you're staring at it for hours you know if you could mix that up that headache for actually feeling something but by removing the stimulus from the situation it can help the person who experiences alexithymia understand how they're feeling and then being able to check in with themselves. Next tip, keep on asking, keep on saying. If you're in any kind of situation where you're with someone who experiences elements of alexithymia, you know, just ask them how they're feeling, how they're doing, you know. It's obviously good talking about our emotions and things because it can help us emotionally going forward, but if someone's not ready for that, it's important not to push it. It's not a good thing to keep on pushing. If someone just doesn't want to open up, then that is their prerogative. In that instance, maybe try little by little, you know. Whatever the person in question needs, you know, just try to help them by keep on asking and, you know, having that dialogue with them. But if you're the person that, you know, has difficulty in expressing your emotions and your feelings and things, personally, when I feel like I just don't know what's going on in my own head. I'll type stuff out, I'll write stuff down. If you have someone in your life that is a little bit more emotionally in tune with themselves, they can help you understand, pinpoint what you're feeling from that and just help you break it down if it's something that you don't understand or find difficulty in. But actually in last week's video, I talked about autism relationships given my advice, which will be on screen now. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a big thumbs up for me down below. Comment below what you thought of this video. Did you think it was good? Any tips for people who experience alexithymia? What's your experience? I'd love to know down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.